question. Alrighty, so just a quick rundown of how to do EKGs. So kind of our goal from door to EKG is five minutes for chest pain or whenever we need to do one for somebody who has an order. Um, first you open up the machine. If it's not already turned on, you'll hit the power button, which will bring up this screen. What you'll first need to do is hit the ID button. So it's our yellow little picture. And then once there's an order in, you'll click get work list and then it will think through through the ER whoever has an order for an EKG. This will show in our list. We will select the patient, make sure you're confirming the name and the birth date. So you would select the patient. Then once you select that patient, it will take you back to, well, it will take you to a screen that looks like this and it will auto-populate with all of that patient's information. You will then just, under operator ID, just type in your initials. So everything else will be already auto-filled once you have an order in. So I'll hit OK. And then it will bring you to the EKG screen. You'll get a set of patches, which is in your drawer, and that'll have 10 on them. What you'll need to do is one will go on the right arm. So if there's an arm there, left arm, and then right leg, you can do lower ab abdomen since we don't have a leg. And then same on the left. And then here are kind of the different ones. Does it matter where on the arms and legs you put them? Ideally, you want them to be kind of more on the outside, just so you're getting a better picture on the legs, kind of on the inside of the ankle. So since we're on the abdomen, just the outside of the abdomen. For our V1 and V2, they need to be on the fourth intercostal space. So kind of difficult to measure on a mannequin, but you know, do the best to measure fourth intercostal space, just directly to the right of the sternum. And then again, the same, the fourth intercostal space, kind of mirroring on the other side of the sternum. So that's V1 and V2. V4, a good measurement is underneath the nipple line. And then V6, a good measurement is underneath the armpit area, so underneath the axilla. And then V3 and V5, you just kind of fill in around the spaces in between. It is important that you don't want V2 and V3 to be directly um, kind of on top of each other, so kind of have it staggered slightly. So that is all of the placement. And then you'll get your cable cords. You'll place them on top of the patient if the patient allows. And then they are all labeled. So right lower, left lower, right arm, left arm, and then V1 through six. And these are just clamps. So you just squeeze and then connect them to the patches. I think Kristen told me don't go by the colors, go by what it says on the leads because sometimes they switch out the ends of the uh, leads so and the yep. colors aren't right. Yep, so don't go by off of this, go off of what those labels are saying. All right, so once you have all of them connected, you will have an EKG showing across. This is a mannequin, so we don't have um, any kind of fake tracing. But the goal is to have a nice, even kind of baseline. You don't want it to be wandering. In general, whenever the machine is nice and happy with what the tracing is, it will all turn green. And your ECG button here and here will light up green. Again, not always is the machine going to pick that up, but that's kind of a good um, kind of acknowledgement saying now's a good time to take a picture. But whenever you feel like you're getting the best picture that you're gonna possibly be able to, you can either click the ECG button here or here on the portable kind of monitor and then it will take a couple of seconds to take your picture. If you're having a hard time getting a good reading, if it's 
a gentleman with a hairy chest, make sure you do your best to maybe do a little shaving at that hairline or take off the sticker and replace it with a fresh one. So making sure that you're having good contact. You can always, if the patient allows, you can lower the head down to try and get them to kind of be a little bit more relaxed in the bed and kind of um, eliminate any type of artifact if possible. So once you get that good picture, you will hit your ECG button. It will create whatever tracing you have. Up here it'll have all the patient's information. It will give you whatever the monitor is reading it as. You can't always go based off of that, but that will give its kind of auto reading. And then you'll hit the print button. Then it will print out that reading. And then once that prints, there's a last ECG button. You can select that as well. And then that will show any of this patient's last EKGs. The doctor will like the most recent ECG that they've had prior. Sometimes if we don't have an order in, so we don't have that patient's information in, that's when it won't show us any old EKGs. Or if we do and they don't have any old EKGs, it won't show us anything. So you'll have the printed current EKG, your last EKG with um, patient stickers on them, and then you will go take them to, if there's a doctor assigned, go take those directly to that doctor. Or if it's a callback without a doctor assigned yet, you'll go and find any physician, so not an ARMP or a PA. Make sure it's a physician and they will sign off and then you can put those um, stickers in the EKG back in the rack for the doctor to pick up. All right, thank you. You are welcome.